It's been a little over a month into the league. Before this league started, I put out a guide for a Reap slash Insanguinate Ascent, which I have been playing the whole league. I hate leveling multiple builds generally. When I want to get into the swing of a league, I just want to, um, I want to just play tier 16 maps once I can play tier 16 maps kind of thing. And the build has been going phenomenally. Honestly, my general thought from this league is like, it's kind of like, in some ways, the best league for Ruthless and the worst league for Ruthless. In other ways, it's kind of broken things over here. And I can see a lot of people dipping after they do eight challenges, not finding too much of a reason to stick around. Uh, I haven't done all eight challenges yet. I don't know if I care too much about the MTX. So I might just do it for bragging rights. Um, but you do have to do the feared. Eh. But yeah, I have the main thing that's been carrying me for this league is not so much the league itself compared to. I think a lot of people are really enjoying it. A lot of people are liking the huge amounts of you would have seen in the stuff I showed before. There, the uh, the huge currency explosions I'm getting from farming ritual, which we'll talk about a bit later. But the thing that's been carrying this league for me is just this build. I am I'm proud of this build. I am enjoying this build so much. Uh, the playstyle is just, it's the perfect kind of super tanky playstyle that I prefer. I want to be able to shut my brain off and run into things without care in the world. Perfect for ritual where things, you're running into things regardless because you don't have space to move around, there's too many monsters. Um, but it's also, it's a caster build, you've got that range, you've got that chaining from Exsanguinate. It's, it's been so, so comfortable. And I'm making a lot of good money. Um, I recently... Uh, sold a bunch of stuff, got some extra Chaos Orbs as well as the uh, a chunk of Alks. Um, I had a load more Val Orbs until I was like Valing a bunch of stuff last night for funsies. Um, assembling a small meme museum of uh, very funny and interesting things over here. And yeah, like, you know, I, I've never had free Orbs of Annulment because you don't can't, you can't get shards uh, for Annulment Orbs in Ruthless, so yeah, that's, I've, got, I've got five re- it's little things like this just, you know, and we dropped a Voidborn Reliquary Key, which we opened, um, which gave us um, absolutely nothing of value, but that, that I don't care. One of my genuinely goals was to drop one of those and open it myself, just because it's a vibe, and buying one off someone for a chunk of out, if they're selling one, isn't the same feeling. But I don't care if it's a bad bad item it's it, it's there it's it's a bit of a, a memory i can keep onto this league that i i got one um we've been getting a bunch of like we got we've got our own six link this is our second six link we made this six link i bought my first which i then sold back for a similar price so then i made this one uh dropped the armor as it is and then thick soccer did uh, got it up to four links and corrupted it successfully, keeping, not just keeping the implicits, but improving one of them. One of them was like 1% 1, 1 to uh, fire res max. Now it's 1% to all because it switched to a corruption one. Uh, so that's lovely. And you can see there's, a, there's even a chunk of region on there. It's really good armor. Uh, we tainted fusing this up to, uh, to six. Uh, got very lucky. And that's another thing that this league has done. That he, it, it's... Omen's made a comeback, but I've not seen it. I think I've seen one person list an Omen of Connections for like a thousand hours. It's so rare. Omen cares themselves are so rare and they usually just drop something shit. But six links are still a lot more accessible this league because you get beyond bosses regularly in the one wood mechanic. And those beyond bosses can drop tainted fusings. It's not crazy uncommon. I've had um, I've had a few drop myself and I've been buying them for like 15, 20 outs regularly. Uh, when I want to uh, try try my luck on, on getting a six link, which has has made things like this possible, and that's the that's the pro and con of this league. It's like it's a lot more accessible to get kind of GG gear, but that means you're getting it faster. And for someone like myself that plays ruthless, because there's always like one more upgrade, I I'm running out of upgrades on this build. That's the big thing. I'm running out of. I have to start making a new build. I could make a penis brander, you know, the, the big popular uh, penis 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 brander is doing way too much damage. Uh, I think they just buffed it with the previous patch for some reason, most recent patch. Um, so, you know, it's fun being the Fizzcaster build that, like, isn't apparently the mo the strongest Fizz. I don't want to play brands, though. I hate fucking, I fucking hate brands. Um, I do like this build for its tankiness, though. It's very good for what it does, what 
it doesn't have as much embossed damage so the penance brand can just like melt bosses it makes up for them being super tanky we will see in the, in the showcase earlier i can just tank cirrus's attacks his, his die beams and stuff uh if i want to do cirrus uh, and the clear with exsanguinate we are not running let's talk about gem changes and gems and things we're not running exsanguinate of transmission because it sucks um People might look at it and say, oh, it comes with chains, so you get an extra support, but it loses the hit portion. And if you lose the hit portion, you lose the ability to leech off it properly. And leech is a big part of our defensive layers. We already have... Let me go on character screen. We have we, we have a huge chunk of regen on this character. We've got multiple regen uniques. Um, increased life regen, increased life regen, increased life regen. <laughs> it's almost everywhere. It's great. Um, talk about the... This ring is insane as well, the cast well. I, I love some of this gear and um, found this and I I made this as well. I roll, I chaos rolled this. It took me really a few chaos and I, I luckily hit and it even had a bit of life. And I exalt Sam slammed the, the, the res on it because why not? Um, yeah, so like we, we, we want the hit portion on Exsanguinate. It's very good. It, 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 it does a good chunk of damage. It's like front-loaded damage rather than just having pure deep damage per second. Because the problem that this build has compared to like a Cold Dot build in terms of like damage over time build, Cold Dot chills and freezes things. This build doesn't do that. It can stun sometimes, like smaller enemies if, with, with the hits. It can stun. But otherwise, like if you're relying purely on your dot damage for Exsanguinate to kill things, you're giving things free reign to kill you at the same time and in very dense content like ritual very active uh content that's really um that's really not comfortable you really want that front loaded damage otherwise you're gonna um you're gonna have a bad time uh, i haven't tried to get this to 2120 because i'm kind of in the mindset where i can't be asked to refarm one if it hits like level 19 and i i haven't got a, a gem temple in a while anyway um because i'm slamming ritual on almost every single map i run uh, i don't see as many masters i haven't even done a katarina yet <laughs> um my betrayal board progress is is pretty bad but i might do a whole separate video later how mechanics like Betrayal really don't interact well with the lead mechanic and it's been one of the points of frustration I've had where I feel like I have to select certain things over other things because of how the lead mechanic infects your maps with so much increased damage reduction and difficulty that it just makes certain things not not viable to run unless you have insane single target damage which again adds to the penance brand problem this lead it's a, it's a it's a bit overworked uh overtuned but yeah we're not so Anyway, we're not we're, we're running exciting, but we got this on a four link. At one point, this was in the six link because uh, our previous six link didn't have the it had different colors, and it was better to run exciting in it rather than trying to recolor it constantly with tainted chromes and lose all my money uh, gambling on that. But then we got this. We got the um, got the six link for Val Reap here. There is a level three empower in here because someone was selling one for fifty arcs, and I had that kind of money to throw around. A uh, little failed corruption there. Feel bad for them not hitting that, but. Um, works for me because it's still a better red dps support than anything else and i mean i didn't I, I the nice thing about this is this is better than swift affliction swift affliction reduces skill effect duration which is not actually very nice for battle reap but you can't even it's so big you can't even see that this is reap unless it's, it's battle reap. Good, look, look at that this yeah you can't actually see you can it's right at the top we got a we got a level 21 20 foul reap uh this was our first attempt at double corrupting a 2020 reap gem um biggest hit of the league honestly because i didn't realize as well just how much of a dps spike val reap was in practice until i got it and then holy shit um now i know like whenever your val reap is active that's your like that's your real dps burst window uh, so yeah we have a really nice supports on here we got we don't speaking about skill effect duration we're not running malevolence i lied um, I didn't know. You, you can run malevolence on this, but if you want to min max your DPS, you can just swap this to a malevolence uh, as long as you can overcap your res enough to cope with it. I mean, it's a bit difficult. One of the reasons I like purity of elements instead of malevolence is the big chunk of res makes it much easier to run Dawnbreaker because Dawnbreaker doesn't have any res on it. Uh, and this also reduces your res, so it, it's, a, it's a big bonus. It means that I don't really take any on the tree currently. Oh no, I, I, I take this because I want the bleed immunity because I. I don't want to have to blow on a flask. 
Leeds sucks. But um, the real, real benefit of this is the total immunity to elemental ailments. This build can't get comfortable freeze immunity from what I, f I, I just can't. I can't. I, I can't rely on a flask for it. It doesn't feel good. Um, and if I'm trying to run really dense rituals and, and similar content, it just feels really bad if you get stuck at any point. Which is why, like phasing on this character with the uh, with the, the raider. Uh, has been so insane. So we tr we changed malevolence for, pur for purity of elements. It's not a huge DPS decrease because half the value of malevolence is in the skill effect duration boost. Um, only it only partly imp it improves damage over time as well. And and we do a decent chunk of hit damage with these skills. You see like you see how much um how much of a hit it has on on, on skill description. Um. Otherwise, most of the stuff we're running is similar aside from. You'll probably notice, like, oh, there's only chains of here. We're not running Blood Rage and we're not running Void Sphere in the final version of this build. When I was figuring out this build, um, I wanted to make sure I always had Frenzy Charge Uptime while well, mapping and bossing. So, Blood Rage was, a, it, it, you know, tiny loss of regen, but you always have it up uh, while mapping because you're always killing stuff. And Void, just slap your voice for on the boss and that will ramp up your um, your ones while bossing. I then discovered I only have these many buttons and I really don't want to use my alt buttons. I I just want to give my thumb a rest. When I've played like other builds before I've used these and you can, it's not like it's the end of the world but I just didn't want to. I wanted to fit everything. I wanted to have Righteous Fire on the front panel as well just so I don't forget to turn it on because you have to turn it on after every uh, area transition. So everything fits on one panel. We've got Molten Shell on left click. We're not using Cast When Damage uh, Taken set up on that. Um, and yeah, I could just Cast When Damage Taken a Blood Rage, but then I'd have to unsocket it if I want to use all my regen while I'm bossing because it wouldn't be useful while bossing. You know, it's like... But then you might say, okay, how, how are we how are we sustaining um, Frenzies comfortably? And that's when our charms come in. Because we have Primalist, because of course we're Primalist, because Primalist is amazing. Uh, we ignore this one, obviously, because it sucks. Um... So our first charm here is giving us the Consecrated Ground on hit and Battle Preservation of Skills, this lets us fit everything. Uh, you can use a free banner one as well, I was using that for a bit, but I got this one for a good price. Uh, Consecrated Ground is great because it gives us an extra chunk of regen if we're hugging the boss, which isn't like a bad strategy uh, when we want to be nearby them anyway for like pride and war mana to, to be proccing properly. We don't want to be like off, trying to off screen anything to, to do max damage to it. Um, and then our next one here is giving us a bit, a bit of extra res. We don't actually need the res on it. I've been looking for better alternative mods, like something that gives like maybe like extra movement speed where you have frenzy charges, that kind of thing. Um, but the overcap is nice because it makes us functionally like elemental curse immune without having to take the, we can take corrupted blood immunity here we don't have to take the elemental resistant one we're already 60% uh, reduced effect of curses from Kikazaru so this just makes it really easy we're definitely we're definitely never going to get our cold res like reduced by a curse um, yeah and then you have this I've been looking for a slightly better this is a 6% but it has a big chunk of life regen which is nice I've been looking for a good 10% one maybe but you know you can get what you get when only so many people are playing ruthless and yeah the, this combination chart this this and this is a great dps combination but it also gives us the regen the increased damage taken i did i did at one point think about trying to run like two of these increased damage taken ones uh but that would mean losing the charge duration one and that is the thing that fixes like our charges last like 17 18 seconds ish with that and that also applies to our blood charges because those are charges that's funny um but it means like we have like 18 seconds to like sustain our frenzy charges they don't perfectly sustain while mapping i'll be honest but i don't need them while mapping necessarily i have, i get enough cast speed we're still using cerberus limb with a big chunk of cast speed we have a ring with a big chunk of cast speed a big chunk of cast speed it's fine i'm comfortable and when i'm doing like really dense content like rituals or delve encounters with lots of rares you're always hitting rares often enough to proc the uh, the 10 percent from from Raider to gain those frenzy charges, and so you're going to get that onslaught. Um, you're going to keep that very comfortably um, in that kind of content. It's it's really nice. But yeah, ritual farming has been the big thing for me 
for endgame mapping this league. Let's be in the real, let's go to the Atlas tree. My Atlas tree looks very funny at the moment because I I went over here to do the, um, the altars challenge. I thought I might as well do that one, it's free. Um, you just have to play maps. What I like about this kind of Atlas setup is You'll notice I'm taking off the uh, the Kirk node slowly because I've got all my map completion and it's actually like a good chunk of points to get these small ones because I'm not really taking anything else over here. Um, and I'm taking off these slowly as I want to get more refund. Do I have even any more yet? No. I've got, I've got, some, I've got some chances. Right, let's do that now. God Slayer. God Slayer. Um, da -da 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 I bought too many, or whatever. I'm, I'm literally taking these all off. Baptist Sin is so fucking easy, this league. I mean... This is my map tab with, like, old red maps. This is my map tab that has loads of... I, I don't have a map tab, don't don't shoot me. I need to clear these out. <laughs> I don't usually have a problem with this, but map to Sin is so fucking easy, this league. Uh, I'm, I just always have tier 16 maps to run currently. So I'm more than happy to take off all that stuff. Ooh, I, where, where are we going to put our points? We can do this live. Where, where would we want to... I can, I can reinvest in something else. I could just leave these for now and figure something else out later. This is just going to flash at me the whole time otherwise, though. We can get more mission chance. I can put back... Um, I took off Soulfight Infusion because I wasn't even wanting to run Nico much. But I was uh, I was on my way over here, actually. I could... Um, I can connect this up. Get the Conquer Map node. Or I can get... We can probably get Vivid Memories to give us a chance of actually dropping a Cortex. Kind of a... Kind of a big deal, this league. Um, and then we'll just keep taking the higher tier, the tier chance ones, maybe. Or we can take increased quant here. So, as we go through this, you'll notice I'm taking all the ritual stuff. I think ritual to be run, it should be run with all this investment. And it's much better to run it in higher tier maps, because you just have the chance of like better drops. You can drop sextants as well, and, and stuff like that. Uh, so having a tanky build that can clear ritual is, is ideal. Uh, but you can run it in lower tier maps and do a different kind of strategy, but you still want to take all this shit. It's it's necessary to make it function. You need to be able to re-roll uh, multiple times. You're often not going to get much anyway, but you're going to get those big hits. I found Enlighten. I've got the unique only ones as well happening and currency only ones. Nothing good from the currency only ones yet. Um, you know, we could go 7th Gate, but again, 7th Gate is an interesting thing because... I got into red maps by doing 7th gate, but then just found it too frustrating to have 7th gate on because this league, this build's really good at do handling map mods. I run my maps blue, some people run them white this league because uh, map mods, uh, they're so bad in terms of what they give you for the, the risk they add, but this build can mitigate so many of them completely, no downside, it's, it's worth running maps blue. The random mods, there's a bunch of mods that will just make me unhappy, like reduced regen, reduced aura effect. I just don't want to have to deal with because I, the last thing I want is to have lots of blue juice and rituals happening. And then suddenly, like I realize, oh, my map has reduced regen. Actually, I'm, it's suffering, you know. Then we should go towards the conqueror map nodes. Um, I just need a couple more points. And I can probably take literally everything I will ever want on this tree. Let's, yeah, let's go over here. I'm going to join this up and then I can take off the um, gates as well. Because I'm going this way anyway. I won't just take this just yet. But yeah, to look more at this. So we, we've got the whole pack size wheel. We take all the Alva stuff because I just want to be able to do Alva missions whenever I want. All the, all the natural spawns. None of these increased chance to get anything. Blocking everything but Ritual. Um, and most of my mapping is just... If I'm out of blood filled vessels, I'll run maps and often it's just like one or two maps until a ritual naturally spawns because I've got the extra chance node here and stuff. Extra chance node here, extra chance node here. It, it adds up quite a lot of... There's a 200% increased chance to contain ritual altars instead of a uh, natural master, which is again why I don't have much Jun progress. Um, I've got some Nico missions saved up. Um, so most of my maps I'm just opening with a blood filled vessel because... I will buy blood-filled vessels. They're like an elk each of anyone that's selling them for a reasonable price because the league mechanic, the Wildwood, drops them. If you do the mini-boss encounter with the Kingdom Mist, he drops a guaranteed ritual vessel. It's insane! Afraid, especially, because you can buy them off other people who don't want to run ritual, they'll just sell them. And they'll sell them for an out per. 
um, unless they want to be weird. I, you, you see some higher listings and I just don't buy them. Um, so I've got some spare here. Um, thing about blood-filled vessels. Uh, ritual maps opened with a blood-filled vessel cannot give you splinters, but that's fine. We, I don't even take splinters half the time when I can get them anyway, because I just want to re-roll for the chance of getting good shit. Um, by the way, I bought these. I, well, I didn't buy these. I was gifted these frags. I didn't. I've, I've, I haven't actually run LD yet. <laughs> um, you'll see in my favorite map slots here. I have not defeated the Shaper. Uh, well, actually, I can do more shadow shaping as well. What do I not want to run? I will decide that later. There's a few more favorite things there. I haven't done Maven. You'll see I haven't even done the 10 boss because again, you know, to do to do the 10 boss, I have to do this, but I want to do these because it gives more monsters to kill with blue juice. And doing empowered monsters, bosses with play, with Maven can just brick it. I actually bricked a Hydra map recently because I got a bunch of juice and then the map had like consecrated ground, which I didn't think was much of an issue, but then Maven also I think rolled heal and the Hydra boss was literally unkillable because the damage reduction given by Wist is just insane and doesn't care about the fact that things will just regen through it and stuff, which makes this kind of like mod with the reduced life regen just essential. Um, I don't think I don't know if that was in the guide. Uh, it's essential for this league. Um, where am I? Where, where, where were we? We took all the ritual stuff. We took all the other stuff. It's a very it's a very straightforward tree otherwise because uh, so much of our Mapping is just run to a 16 map, blood, blood fill vessel, or run them without anything and get rituals to spawn. And I just use four of these if they spawn to get four blood fill vessels. And then the next four maps, these are scarabs basically. The, the, they're, they're scarabs that you, you know, you have to get the mechanic to spawn first, but then you get four ritual scarabs to guarantee a ritual spawn in a red map. And when scarabs in this league, you have to get like tier three syndicate operatives to get the red scarabs to do them in high tier maps. It Rituals just insane this league. It's usually like a CD tier mechanic. You get maps from Ritual Rewards. There's not like map only, but you get random maps offered. I get tier 16 sustain from that as well. You get random uniques outside the unique only one uh, the thing as well. But Ritual's just insane, especially for, even if your rewards are shit, as long as you get a load of juice, when you pop a load of monsters, you're just getting like, so much loot. Uh, as 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 the uh, the showcase before, where it should have should, there's some clips of like just, brrr. and that's another thing about this league that like is, I don't want to get too into like reviewing the league. This is more about the build, but I now hate that we can't hide items in Ruthless. It's a sign of like them not really balancing things properly for for Ruthless. I don't think the Wisps in Ruthless should be giving as much damage reduction and as much reward. I think they should both be neutered to make it a more palatable and comfortable mechanic here. Because the problem we have here is like... You feel like you have to do the mechanic because the rewards are so good, but then sometimes you're stuck like... whacking a boss like for like two minutes because it just won't die. But then if you if you are willing to whack the boss for two minutes you get things like the Voidborn Reliquary key I got was probably a drop from an empowered boss I had uh, in a ritual. In, in, in a ritual encounter I was doing and he took forever to kill but it was worth it. it it gave me that pop I've had a divine orb drop from another boss like a tier 7 boss that was empowered stuff like that it's just you have to do it if you're not doing it you're leaving so much money on the table so much potential the big drops the high rolls are all in that mechanic and uh, getting as much juice as possible and then apply it to a like you know ritual and, uh, and other things but it's yeah like not having a filter means then you have to, I've had to like use the manual hide all things button just to be able to use my screen, but then if you click on items on the ground it still walks you over to them, so it's a real war like trying to do rituals. If you've like killed a bunch of stuff around a ritual and that stuff has dropped a bunch of stuff, then you could just randomly walk in the wrong direction because you've, you know, you've misclicked uh, an item and now your character's like, wee, I'm gonna go, you know, it's, it, 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 it's, eh. But as I was saying, Despite some frustrations with the way the league has been implemented into Ruthless, I've been so happy with the build, it's just, it's definitely been worth just playing a lot and enjoying. I'm never going to play Ritual again probably, unless the next league mechanic has some kind of similar interaction, it's it's not going to be worth it. Um, you'll see I have a Sanctum Tome here, and I'm not, Sanctum just is not worth encountering, uh, in, 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 interacting with at all, because it's so much time spent outside of empowered maps. And speaking of time spent, you might have noticed that I have the, I have the little clock tower thing, so I can keep track of how long I spend in my maps, and Jesus, sometimes it's a, it's a while. 
Um, because you spend time in the woods, and then you have to like go out of the woods and then spend more time killing stuff because it's empowered, including and especially bosses. And if you then get a ritual with the boss in it, and then you have to kill the boss again, it's about it can add up to a lot of extra time. Add Alva temples, uh, Alva incursions in there sometimes as well. It's it's a lot. Um, so I think in previous leagues I was blasting maps in like three or four minutes depending on layout on my uh, juggernaut, and that's with. Um, with like a consecrated pappy kind of like boom 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 kind of build but this is like you know walking simulator with a bit of quick step happening um you can't i, I don't have a i don't teleport into packs and stuff so it's a bit slower in that regard plus the time spent in the wild but plus the time but you're looking at like sometimes i can do a map in like seven minutes and sometimes i'm still in a map after like 20. but again the rewards are so good that time investment is worth it. I'm walking out of maps often with like five outs, two vowels. I'm just I'm racking up this currency very comfortably. It means I can spend. I've spent so much currency this league, you know. And that's the challenge you then have when playing this league is like. Let me tell you why I prefer Toto. And this is going to be probably controversial because a lot of people didn't like Toto, and that's fine. It, it, it's a divisive mechanic. I like doing something different with my league mechanic. That's why I usually, I, don't, I haven't done any heist this league, by the way. No heist at all. I haven't built up my rogue, I've ignored it completely. There are some really good high rolls in there now, but they took out gems as well, so it's like, you know, here and there. But, you know, get a simplex amulet that's like worth like a billion, bajillion alks in this league because they're just so powerful as things. You just chaos spam them, it's very fun. But I, I haven't touched heist. I don't do as much delve. It's just like, I feel like I have to do ritual every map, otherwise I'm leaving so much money on the table. And you could just say like, oh, you you know, you can just do other things. But it doesn't feel good to do those other things. Usually in Ruthless, it feels good to do whatever's thrown at you because you're optimizing your value that way. But in this league, it's like, you should be in your maps as much as possible. You should be juicing. You should be popping juice monsters as much as possible. So it's, the decision making is more limited. And that fucks with things like, like you're trying to do a map you you get like 4k blue juice and a bit of yellow and then I mean, a bit of purple and then jun encounter spawns and it's an assassination encounter and you manage to kill one of the assassins but when you kill one of them the others get a trigger to want to run away and usually that isn't much of a problem because you can kill them in short succession but the one that wants to run away is double empowered uh you cannot do as much you you can't kill him unless you're a crazy penance brand build that you know that does way too much damage than it should it's you know the average build is not gonna be able to handle that and you're gonna lose an operative and that can completely fuck with the encounter same with alva you have to be really careful how much you juice when alva spawns because you can you know you can be on on the spot to get a tier three tempest room but the architect you need to kill is double empowered and you can't kill him fast enough because it's time it's a time limit it's it's annoying to have these things happen because they're out of you, you don't choose what gets empowered it's not like sentinel where you're like you're making an active decision to say i'm going to um i'm going to empower this boss and not empower this guy and we'll empower this pack of enemies it just happens randomly and, and as i just said you can't it doesn't feel good to not juice a map because i feel like i'm it's a big opportunity cost to not take as much if it's offered to me i will take it because Otherwise, I'm leaving money on the table. But then, if I get a if I, if I get a natural arrow spawn in my map with like six k blue essence, I have to think: Do I do I want to do this, or am I going to brick my temple if I try to do this and and fuck it up? And I won't. I won't. You know, sometimes the monster that you need to kill to the, the drops the stone of passage is going to be unkillable, and you're not going to be able to open your temple up enough. I've had temples ruined because of that, and it's not fun to interact with for me. There's obviously some risk and reward there, there's obviously some amount of agency, but it's not fun to try to interact with that kind of chaotic, like, well, suddenly this guy's 500% tougher now and you won't have time to kill him. It's just impossible. This is a, this is a very well like put together build for like the tankiness and the kind of damage it's putting out. I haven't fully checked the POB, but you can't exactly calculate it anyway because it's like, depending on things like, are they standing in the Valreek pool? Are they... Blah, 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 kind of stuff like that. But it's very good damage for what it's doing. And I still just like, you know, I have to worry about those sort of things. Um, also ignore this tab here. Um, that's 
we had like a, a real I, I, me and me and a guy there's a there's a there's a cool guy called um his, his character his main character is like tasty spins he's done a few other characters he's um he was posting on the uh the ruthless subreddit to his builds and, and, and lots of cool stuff he's been really going really hard this league um uh, we had a bit of banter over trade like a little dispute over the fact he was pri he was charging 25 outs for like frags and i was like that's yeah good luck studying for that and then he said i was being rude and asked me to apologize and i was like oh, yeah, it's a fair comment <laughs> and we had some back and forth and like yeah I, I i gave him a really cool ring in the end as like a little gift and he gave me a bunch of maps and we all we, we, we all like we, we we had a we had a fun time i think he's quitting the league soon anyway and i kind of feel dirty kind of touching these maps because they're so i need to reset my now map but the, there's like so much money in having all these technically and i could just do like a bunch of like i mean there's, there's only three different kinds so I, I can't actually do a bunch of serious if i did it but they're really good maps to to run um but otherwise ignore that, that this this is an anomaly i haven't been collecting these um been collecting flasks i have some like i got this really really fucking cool bow I kind of want to exalt slam it. I've been thinking about. I, I got this double corrupted Bisco's leash and I got some MF gear, so I was thinking about making an MF character. But the problem is, my strategy for tier 16 ritual farming feels so lucrative. I don't feel like trying to do lower tier maps would feel very good. I mean, I could try lower tier ritual farming and make a build, but I don't know if I can justify spending like all the time to level another character and all that stuff. And they have to do Wildwood with every character, it sucks. So, uh, yeah, I've been thinking of making like a, a one of those like all damage can poison, poison, elemental damage kind of, you know, whatever kind of skill you use things. But uh, it's it's never, I've never logged on to Path of Exxon and be like, yes, let's make a new character because I can just play this. Um, and got some stuff is not selling very fast at all. Uh, there's, you know, that in the mean museum. Got some. Also, this is this is a really cool double corrupt. And it's very hard to sell things, I think, because like a lot of people who have the money to do things are pretty set in what they want. There's not as many people otherwise. It's it's a people are quitting as well because they're getting their eight out of eight and then they're just leaving. I think not having Ubers in eight out of eight, the knock-on effect of that as well is like you have people stay around less because all they want to do is eight out of eight. The people who people who work really hard in ruthless trade are more likely to be people who are trying to get eight out of eight, it seems. And then when they have eight out of eight, they're gonna dip. So Ubers being an 8 out of 8 actually kept those people around for longer, which maybe was better for the economy. <laughs> I, I, ironically, it's kind of a funny thing. Uh, and some other people just quit the league uh, before they fixed the challenges because the challenges were bugged for a while and they just quit and just, you know, they haven't come back uh, kind of thing. Yeah, and also we're still using Cerberus Limb. Uh, I mentioned that earlier, you can see it there. We're not, we, don't, we haven't found a cold iron point. I haven't found one for sale uh, while I've had all this chunk of money lying around. I've been trying to chance this whenever I get scours, but yeah. You know, I kind of down. I'm ha kind of happy just using Cerberus Limb because the extra only using 0.2% of physical damage leads to his life, even with our damage, is like not. I don't know if it's fully reliable for like keeping leech comfortably. I kind of like having. I put this model here anyway, but I really do like having the 0.5 extra there. Plus, the energy shield doesn't matter. That just gets eaten by um, this, but like. Um. Cast speed is what I really like. The you know we got a high roll of spell damage as well. Just you know being able to like cast. This is without any frenzy charges and being able to cast exaggerate that fast is really fucking good. Um, and it also increases our damage with uh, reap because we do a good. We have a decent hit portion. I'd say about at least like a quarter to a third of our damage is, is hit uh, rather than dot. And let's look at the passive tree quickly as well because like you'll notice uh, we're on four point seven k life. On the POB we had more than that. Um, I think like at level 90 I've just like, I've decided, I don't think I took this on the passive, I don't know if I can't even can't remember my own build. I haven't taken all the little life nodes, I could push this life up higher if I did. Um, but the stuff I've chosen, I, I've you know, I haven't chosen to go the suppression route obviously because it's stupid. Um, it's a very straightforward tree really. And we haven't gone clusters. Clusters is like one of those ideas like, oh I could have like a month long project where I try to get GG clusters and then Change the build for clusters, but I would lose a bunch of life, probably. I, yeah, I would lose... I'd have to take off this bit. That was the plan. Take off this bit for... Sound of Righteous Fires now in my head. Take off this bit to go into clusters. And I don't know if I can justify that uh, with the life I would lose in the process. It's just more... It's just... The build is very comfortable. I'm, I'm probably going to do some more on and off, like, just 
casually ritual farm if I feel like they're blasting some maps uh, and seeing what else, what other cool drops I can get because you know I haven't, you know, I haven't found a Valdos box yet, for instance. Maybe I can get one of those. Uh, someone got a Mage Blood and double corrupted it and it poofed, which is hilarious. Um, but I, yeah, I, the build feels pretty done. We've got the six link, we've got fucking level three in power, we've got the uniques we need. This ring is never getting replaced. Neither is this amulet. You see, we allocated freedom of movement as well, just for 10% movement speed, because it's better than anything else. Because uh, movement speed is like a premium thing uh, that we don't have a crazy amount of access to, uh, since we're not running the um, the Open the Magi kind of broken shit. Uh, we started out running that. This build has like, I should emphasize, this build has been through like so many different versions of itself slowly. It has slowly, it's not like I just found these pieces around, oh, now it works. So, uh, you know, before we had Dawnbreaker, the survivability was like not as good because this gives so much in armor and block, uh, attack block, which is great. Uh, you know, it took a while for us to get our Cerberus limb finally. Um, I was on a five, you know, when I was on a five link, the, this, this hat is, the, I've had like 20 different hats. Um, these boots though, they were an early, they, they stay with me forever. Uh, loads of different gloves have gone through the build as well. I, I was waiting for a while before I wanted to start impliciting them. This has life, some extra regen and the cold res we need. Um, priority isn't very important this league because you get so much extra. And I'd say like, if, yeah, to anyone playing this kind of build, like, your priority is like, get a Vile Reap, and you want to get your uniques, get Dawnbreaker. Those are the things that make the build really feel super comfortable. Super comfortable. Obviously, first get your, you know, get all your supports, chain and unleash on exciting kind of thing. But like, when you're pushing into reds to have like damaging survivability, you just want your regen uniques. You want your leech. Uh, you want your big, big fat exarch shield. Um, that plus a five link and your golden. And the thing about like, these shields are more expensive and rarer this league, because less people are doing exarch because it takes longer to do maps because of the wildwood, which is an interesting effect you have, like, likewise for other, like, boss-specific drops. But, um, it's still quite accessible, you could still find them, like, this is like, 10 hours, I got, like, a determination, I, I dropped a second determination, we sold that, uh, I actually dropped my first determination this league from a barrel in Act 7, so I had a pretty easy ride for survivability in, like, white, yellow maps, maybe it's not as representative as the build is otherwise, but before you get fat armor and a fat shield, determination doesn't do as much anyway, so it's not, like, it's not a massive difference maker early on, regardless, I'd say. Uh, we also dropped our own pride, uh, alongside that. Mm, yeah. So yeah, I'm not sure what else I want to do for this build. One thing I could do, if I drop another Enlighten, if I, or I find another one in a Ritual, I could try, I could take this off, move something else around, and then, you know, like, yeah, I could move Quick Step here, and then we can Enlighten a bunch of Auras and fit an extra Aura in, maybe, but I probably then have to drop Quick Step as well, or I drop, like, Hex Bloom on Vulnerability. That's another change. Hex Bloom Vulnerability feels so fucking good in Rituals and Delve and any de dense encounters, because... You don't want to be casting your curse multiple times, and your curse gives you so much extra damage against enemies, so it makes it really valuable for clearing out the, you know, the, the faster you kill stuff in rituals, the more tribute you get. Uh, so it's really valuable having that automatically spread as you kill things. So yeah, I'm not actually quite sure where I, I you know, I don't want to take out Quick Step really because it is helpful. I don't know how I'd fit if I fit an Enlighten. I don't know how I'd even put an extra aura in. Um, but it's something we could think about. Like, one option also is just dropping Corrupting Fever because it doesn't actually add that much damage. You know, like an extra aura could do more. I, could, I can probably can't fit like Malevolence extra, but I could, I could fit out some other stuff. That's one opportunity there, maybe, if we find another Enlightened. But, otherwise, yeah, the build is so... It feels so done. Uh, Flasks are, like, whatever, but, you know, you can only get so much good stuff. I'm keeping- the, the free charge when you hit on this is so good, I don't care about the suffix being worthless. I run two life flasks just because I can get easy poison removal, this has loads of charges. It makes poison maps and poison monsters really, uh, comfy. Um... Yeah. And yeah, if you see any, anything here you like, just message me, you know, if you want a really cool, you know, someone please buy my level 23 Grey Suffolk's frame. Some of this stuff feels like a me no one, no one wants this, even though this is like a free enlightened, no one wants, this is a perfect rolled crown, the inward eye with the plus two uh, on auras on there, which isn't in the say in itself as well, but it is like a really cool hit. I've got some, these Vile Aspects, I've got, um, 
I've been wondering about trying to throw just like a tainted um, mythical on this because I think it will keep the links. I mean, I'm not actually sure about that. This, this, this is a really cool shield. Um, this was a what was it called? Oblate. So it, it was the one that the, the belt for curses, which we corrupted and it bricked. Um, silver oils. Lots of cool stuff, which is not going anywhere apparently because not many people care about buying stuff in in trade uh this this league for this this kind of stuff and i can't be bothered to make new characters for it either uh arriving jar as well that's funny so yeah, i'm probably going to go back i'm going to do a bit more ritual farming see what else cool drops i can get to and get another unique only one and and get a get a big kitchen from that maybe maybe we'll find a bowder's box maybe we'll find a mage blood this league who knows um but overall it's it's been I've had a lot of frustrations with the league and how it's implemented in Ruthless, but the build itself has been what's kept me playing the most. I've been very, very satisfied. Uh, and that's why I don't like playing. I'm not going to probably... I'm, I have... I, where, is, where is it? I think I have a good... There is my... Big, yeah, I have a wand. Fucking 200 imp wand. Um, this is a really good thing. It adds light damage to spells as well, plus one. Yeah, you know, Pen is a physical gem, right? This is a good wand. As long as you can have get get the int for it, you need to like taint a jeweler it up as well and whatever. This is a good wand for um for a penis a penis brander, I think. If, uh, cold iron point would be better probably, but I don't want to make the build because like I, people just say it's not fun to play. And I would much rather play this kind of build where it's like, it's still an amazing build. It doesn't do as much damage, but it's super tanky, but it feels very fun to play. Um, but for the fuck of it, let's just do, let's just do a random map to close this off. I'm not gonna do my Kyrick missions uh, yet. I'm just gonna try re-roll with this until I get some more unique maps off him. I'm just gonna hold this otherwise. Um, yeah, let's, 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 let's demonstrate. Just for the fun. See if we get rituals naturally spawning. Now I don't know the actually best approaches to like I, I've seen there's there are videos of like, oh here's how you optimize, get the most juice possible. I just follow blue juice. That's my that's my that's my modus operandi. Um Yellow juice is actually kind of like the worst for me, I think, because if I'm doing rituals, giving stuff extra movement speed sucked. You, you'll see as well, very annoying, I, I, I hate how the blue of Eater influence is the same as the fucking blue of the Wisps. But I think I'm going nowhere now, I'm wasting my time. This is not, we're not, we're not juicing very well currently, we know we got to follow some better juice. Uh, oh, that's going to lead the same way. I'm going to backtrack, see if I can get a better... See that, that's... You get blue shift on the ground, it, it, it makes it harder to see the blue juice, which is why I was running Exarch influence for the longest time before. Good. I don't really enjoy the fact that like how much juice you get is often based on things that feel completely out of your control. Yeah, I thought that wasn't well there, there's, there's yellow list here. I'm gonna run out in a second. Is there a thing there? Okay. Yeah, a little bit lost. Um, I don't see any more like little wisp things. Yep, that's fine. We had, we had a tiny bit left. Okay, so we've got like 3k with like two yeah, That's fine. Okay, it's a respectable amount of juice. I don't want to hang around there too long. But you see how the wild itself takes like the length of like half a map anyway. Ooh, damage. I haven't seen any rituals yet. Can you see the combination of this now already? Can you imagine not using your maps and not just getting random outs of your... And gems. You got a lot of gems. Ow. You see how fast I... Oh my god, our life is going up. 
Uh, I shouldn't just stand still. Really. We have uh, reduced foot damage from the, uh, the mastery. There's another out. I don't really like how everything's like a fucking mage. I don't want to get shot a bit. And you can see how that hit portion of examinate is important for some things. Um, there's often like our survivability, even just back there sometimes, has hinged upon the fact that like we're very quickly regaining our life while we're being hit. It's like it's one of the reasons why the fire to destiny is like the best defensive amulet, right? Because you gain a bit of life before you get hit. But that's what we're basically giving ourselves on that just Um we're giving ourselves a sort of similar effect by having such a big chunk of leech and regen between hits. Unless they come at super high speed, we are getting this. There are any rituals in here? Well, we're, we're getting so much life churning into our, 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 our character that it's. It takes a lot for monsters to kill us, which is what allows us to do these tier 16 rituals with this much juice. And, I mean, it's not like I'm doing this shit deathless. Um, I'm not trying to push levels, and I could... Oh my god. It's fucking terrifying, man. At some point, I'll have to do the, the Maven stuff. There's, there's, there's an Atlas point in there, which, you know, is kind of worth getting at some point. Let's go and stop. You see that that recovery? Most, so, most builds would just die there. But we uh, we, we have that we have leech plus regen plus. I don't know if that's a attack or spell. Actually. I don't know if we're blocking any of that. Um, I can't remember if that's an attack or a spell. We might be blocking half of those roughly. I keep forgetting we have all of like. You know, a huge chunk of forty-five percent long. I'm scared of Cool. Yeah, it's probably for the better that I don't try to demonstrate the rituals while I'm also uh, recording on OBS because my computer might decide that's a bit too much going on at once. <laughs> it's so far been fine, um, fine with how busy things have gotten sometimes. And there's an hour mission as well. Nice. Right. Quick extra sweep of this map. But you see, just from having 2.7 there, we've got like a couple of arcs and, you know, like... That's without even having a ritual. So if we had a ritual in this map as well, it'd be even more. Yeah, no, no, no extra spawns on this mechanic. Uh, no extra mechanic spawns this map. My brain is so... oh my god. You see what I mean by like, you know, like, oh my god, I told you, look, look at the map system, it's so good. One thing someone has said to me is like, want the, the yellow wisp might actually be affecting map sustain, which is cool. Uh, it doesn't mean I want to take loads of them, but it's still, you know, it's a nice bonus to have them. I'm still clearing this map just because I feel like it, I don't usually pull full clear maps, Jesus Christ. Why am I so high got one of these fucking things on me? Power guy, just dying comfortably. Oh, the garbage unique. Just what I needed to add to my garbage unique collection. Must be alive. Oh. Yep. <laughs> uh, extra chaos damage. That's that's you know. But yeah, that was a cool. Yeah, I I I didn't keep track of the lightning barrage and died to that. That's you know, whatever. That's what it takes to kill this build. Was born. Greetings. So yeah, it's um, it's been it's been been a league so Doing far. Well. I'm probably just going to be casually playing on and off from now. I kind of I kind of hit my goals for what I've wanted to do in the league, and yeah, beyond that now it's just yeah, uh, just chilling, just mapping. So, uh, before my, I think my computer might run out of storage space if I record for too long, actually, because uh, it was getting tight earlier. I should probably wrap this up. 
if you have any other questions about the build, I should try to get back to something. There might be some comments I've missed on the build guide. If you're if you're doing this build, if you're enjoying it, um, let me know. If you're having a problem, let me know. Uh, I've got this from zero to a hundred basically, and it it, it it feels so good uh, for for one of the best strategies for farming in the league. But you know, like the, you know, um, get into leave a leave a comment, um, like and subscribe, and all that shit kind of you know. Yeah. 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 I have no idea how to end my videos still, so uh